In my previous video, we discussed the best NBA player to never win each award. Today, we're doing the opposite. Let's find the worst player to win each award, or least best player to win each award, since they're all great players. Now, I do have a few quick rules. First, the award has to represent the skill set. For example, with the Defensive Player of the Year award, I will be naming the worst defender, not the worst scorer. Even if the overall said player might be a better offensive player, but the skill set is going to match the award. This video is going to go over NBA history, but if you want to focus on the game's future, to find the best NBA bets and picks for upcoming games, check out the Game Day's NBA Pick of the Day. You can do that by clicking the link down below. The Game Day is a new sports and sports betting media company built for today's fan. Without further ado, let's rebound onto that list. The worst player to win Rookie of the Year is Michael Carter-Williams. Michael Carter-Williams is the definition of a one-hit wonder. He had one good season, and since then he fell off into a role player who comes off the bench averaging 4 points per game in his lower averaging seasons. He won Rookie of the Year in 2013 and seemed like he was primed to become a franchise player, but the opposite ended up happening. The worst or least best player to be selected to an All-Star game is James Donaldson. James made one All-Star game in 1988 at age 30 while playing for the Dallas Mavericks. He averaged 7 points per game, 1.3 blocks, and 9 rebounds in that season. These are simply not All-Star numbers. During the game, he only scored two points. James is a solid player, but many got snubbed and could have taken his spot on that roster. The least best player to win MVP is the youngest player to win the award, Derrick Rose. Rose's overall career was hindered due to injuries, and his 2011 MVP season wasn't really that noteworthy. The most noteworthy thing was his age being 22, and this award is heavily narrative driven. He averaged 25 points per game and 7 assists on 44% shooting. Keep in mind, this is great for a 22 year old, but compared to the entire pantheon of MVPs, these stats in his season seemed rather mundane amongst other MVPs. The least best player to win finals MVP is Andre Iguodala. He won the award during the 2015 finals, playing for the Warriors, beating a heavily injured Cavs team in six games. If we were to give this award to the best player on the court, it should have gone to LeBron James. Jerry West once won a finals MVP playing for the losing team, so this is not impossible. Possible. If we were to give this award to the best warrior, it should have gone to Steph Curry. Iggy Adala won the award due to the narrative of defending LeBron James, but if you really break down his defense on LeBron, letting your opponent drop 40 points a night is not really amazing defense. The worst player to win a ring can easily go to any player out of a team's rotation but still awarded the actual jewelry. However, one notable name that comes to mind is Darko Milicic, who won a ring during his rookie season playing for the Pistons. Darko was drafted second overall in the 03 draft ahead of Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. He was expected to be a franchise player, but was kind of a bust averaging 1.4 points per game. During his rookie season, and only playing 34 games during that season, he averaged 0 points per game in the finals. The least best player to win a sixth man of the year is Aaron McKee. He won the award in 2001 playing for the 76ers. During that season, he actually started 43% of the games in that season and had a career average of 7.4 points per game. He averaged 11 points per game during that season he won the award. He was an average player, but amongst the other players who won the award, he doesn't really stand out. The most improved, or should I say least improved, player is Ryan Anderson. He never developed into a fully fledged all-star, and was sort of a near all-star during the prime of his game, and became a rotation player later in his career. However, when he won the award, he only improved by 6 points from 10 points per game to 16 points per game, and all his other stats were nearly identical. He also then averaged 10 more minutes per game, so his per 36 minute stats only increased by less than 1 point per game. Long story short, he didn't really improve by much. The least defensive defensive player of the year is Tyson Chandler. Tyson won the award in 2012 while playing for the Knicks. The reason why Tyson is picked here is not because he's a bad defender, but because there's just so much competition in this award. Also, it 
it is worth noting that he is one of the only designated 7 foot centers who won this award but never averaged over 2 blocks per game, and when he won the award in 2012, he couldn't even crack double digit rebounds or single digit steals. The least best all-star MVP is Glenn Rice. Glenn is actually a pretty good all-star caliber player. The reason why he gets picked is that many other MVPs are legendary franchise caliber players. Glenn won the award putting up 26 points, 1 assist, and 1 rebound during that all-star game. And now for all-star weekend events. Since these are somewhat intangible, I will be counting the selection as the achievement rather than winning the trophy. With that in mind, the worst dunk contest performance belongs to Daryl Armstrong. To make a long story short, Armstrong isn't known for his dunk contest dunks, but more so his layups during the contest. He accidentally did a reverse layup in the 96 slam dunk contest. Kenny the Jet Smith himself had deemed this the worst dunk in the competition's history. Armstrong was awarded last place in the contest and was never invited to compete again. With the skills challenge changing its format from a solo timed contest, competition to a duo face-off, it's hard to pick a spot here based on any specific data. With that being said, someone who has been selected to a competition about dribbling, speed, and ball handling, Andre Drummond is not a player that comes to mind, yet was selected to compete in the 2018 competition. He was eliminated immediately and was only selected as a replacement for Kristaps Porzingis who tore his ACL. The worst three-point shootout performance ironically belongs to the GOAT of the sport, Michael Jordan. MJ only had one invitation to the 1993 point shootout and his results are a clear reason why he was never invited back. He went 5 for 30, shooting at 16% from downtown. This is the worst percentage of points ever in this competition's history. The lowest scoring title belongs to Neil Johnson, who won the award only averaging 22.3 points per game in 1953. The lowest block champ title belongs to Anthony Davis, averaging 2.57 blocks per game in 2018. The lowest assist champ award belongs to Andy Phillip, who only averaged 5.8 assists per game in 1950. The lowest lowest rebound champ belongs to Dwight Howard who averaged 12.4 rebounds per game in 2013. The lowest steals champ award belongs to Draymond Green who averaged 2 steals per game in 2017. The weakest defender to make an all-defensive team is Eric Snow. Eric only made one all-defensive second team in 2003. Eric is an undersized shooting guard at 6'3 who averaged about 1 steal and 3 rebounds. He's a solid defender, but there are many better defenders who won this award. The least best NBA player to make an All-NBA team is Derek Coleman. Derek is actually a pretty good player. He's a one-time All-Star who also won Rookie of the Year. The only reason why he gets this pick is simply because of all the great competition who also made All-NBA teams. So here is the worst or least best player to win each award. Let me know what you think of this list and don't forget to check out thegameday.com. Be sure to dunk on that like button and subscribe with notifications turned on. I'm Rebound Rewind and I'll fast forward to you later.